Mm-hmm. TJ Hoosmanzada is back. Time Ooh. for my favorite segment. Ooh. Got my Twitter off right here. Mm. Time to get anti-social Darnell Smith. Our social media managers here. What's sure. crack a Yes, sir. Starting off with the GOAT, Tom Brady. Aye. You would think after nine Super Bowl appearances, all the haters would go away, right? Well, no. apparently not. No. <laughs> a local Pittsburgh news station fired an employee for labeling Brady a known cheater mm. during this Monday newscast. <laughs> uh, this mm. screenshot went viral immediately, and obviously the guy's joking here. Mm. I mean, I got no problem with it. Are you guys surprised he got fired for this troll job? I think it's an overreaction. Oh, Definitely. You do? I, I, yeah. Fire for a joke. <laughs> but you know what's weird? Something that is in script is something different than if you hear it. Like, we always say he's cheated or scandal, and it's like, ah. But when you write it, and then you're in a professional setting that's supposed to be a little more objective than what we're doing here, I, I, I kind of laughed at it. I was like, oh, man, that joke went wrong. You know, he, he tried to go somewhere and got caught out. So, yes, yeah, overreaction, but... I also like the fact that it corrects for everyone else out there who's going to try to take those kind of shots. Come on, man. That man shouldn't have been fired for that. It's a joke. It, even if it didn't go over smoothly, suspending for a couple weeks, you're going to fire the man? They dead wrong for that. No way you... It's a, and, he's, and he's in Pittsburgh. He probably felt like he probably got cheated. That's the funny fan. part. Like, he's like, oh, we all in on this, right? And then as soon as the teacher or the principal came out, they're like, oh, everybody backed <laughs> up out of there. Like, lost his that's on you, bro. Right. That's kind of funny. Like, you went there for everyone else's reaction, and their reaction is actually Can you imagine you when they told him he was getting fired? He probably was like, <laughs> I was just playing. Like, I will say this. I was, we don't know what his personnel file looks like. Mm. This might not be his first offense. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and you that's, can't have him in Pittsburgh. The Steeler games next year with all the issues they got going on, you don't know what shots. He's probably been be. worn before. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's next, Darnell? Damn. Yeah, moving on to the smartest guy in football, uh-huh. Joe Clatt, who yes. tweeted this hard-hitting, serious question to his followers. Mm. You have a 10-hour drive ahead of you. What is the car, album, and three people you got with you? Mm. So I want to hear from you guys. Which album and three people you want to bring on your drive? All right, I'm going to go first because I put a lot of thought into this. <laughs> okay, I really okay. Jodeci is my favorite group of all time. All right. And then so I had to decide between Diary of a Mad, Mad Band or the show, the party, the after party, the show, the hotel, the after hey, it's party. It's 10 hours. You can get through all this. I'm going Not with Diary of a Mad Band uh-huh. and Jodeci. And then my three people are Michelle Alexander that wrote probably one of my favorite books of all time, The, the New Jim Crow. It's about mass incarceration. David Simon made my favorite television show of all time, The Wire. And then I like to laugh and crack jokes, so Chris Rock would be my third person. Oh, man. Okay. You really thought about yeah, that. Yeah, you really I thought did. about that. Oh, TJ, you got something? All I got is I know I'm banging Tupac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, go through, Ride or die. I go through all of those. <laughs> yeah. And I would prefer to be in a sprinter so that I can be Oh, relaxed. you got us a 10-hour road trip. We going somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And my three people, I mean, I didn't even think about it. I'm always with my family, so I'm like, let's go. Yeah, I like that. Okay, you, damn, can I borrow your sprinter? Because I got an Escalade <laughs> written down here. Because I was like, I got to drive, but the sprinter drive me, folks. There you go. I like that. Um, Outcast, Southern Player List, the Cadillac. Ooh, Folk that's music. a good one. That's oh, a good one. we got to pump that from the beginning all the that's way through. One. And then I'm going to bring my sister. My best friend, who's a clown, OG Tiki Henny Loke. and then I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring. I need Ice Cube. I need Ice Cube in the car with me because he just, he just, he inspired me so much. He helped raise me. Didn't even know he did. And then the third person, dang, it gotta be like a video vixen from like 04. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, your wife, she ain't watching this show at all. No, no, no. She working out. She ain't we watching We just had a baby. She ain't watching for a while. You good. You good. That's somebody from back in the day. Give me one of them, man. We just got to ride out. My sister there to keep it all, you know, separate. <laughs> wow. Oh, my I'm God. God. Oh, you, got a, you got an album? Listen, I, I want, well, album... I'm, I'm going more to mixtape route. I'm going to go Lil Wayne, No Ceilings. Ooh. It's one of the best, best mixtapes out. He's freestyling the whole album. And yeah. for three, the three people... I was going to say one of y'all, but y'all ain't put me on y'all list. So. <laughs> I'm going to go, go with Kobe Bryant, uh, Hey Manning, uh, and I got to be my boy Weezy, man. He's a GOAT. Uh, <laughs> Weezy, he can be freestyling the whole ride. Wait, you got him in the speakers and next yeah, yeah, yeah. I might, turn music, I might turn the music down and let him just freestyle. Darnell, we were going to pick you, but your lats. <laughs> ain't no room in that sprinter with the same time. Let's go to the last one, last one. Um, All right, man. Uh, so Shaq, you know, has been asking Kobe um, why he's not in the GOAT conversation, and Kyle and Joy had an interesting take on it on the herd this morning. Take a listen. Very rarely is a Dallas Cowboy, a Pittsburgh Steeler, 
or a Los Angeles Laker or a New York Yankee overlooked in a greatest debate? Yeah, but I, I weirdly think that that plays a factor into it because most of the country hates the Lakers. So, like, we're not going to even give Kobe that nod. Uh, is there truth to this? I, I, he's a knockoff of Michael Jordan. Oh, the, 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 when do, oh, if you got God. Michael Jordan and he's the GOAT, why would you put a knockoff in the conversation? Come on, Whitlock. You're going to get fired, Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh dude. <laughs> like, there are better ways to term Kobe Bryant. He's a knockoff. 2.0 sounds better than knockoff. Thank you. I mean, a knockoff? Like, <laughs> everybody is, everyone's a knockoff. He does. Every, <laughs> I mean, he's a knockoff. Come on, Whitlock. Everybody <laughs> steals game from others who did it well before them. Um. Yeah, Kobe just, you know what? It's just been a roller coaster with We're out Kobe. of time. It's, it's yeah. a knockoff. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, knockoff. I'm a Laker fan. He's not a knockoff. He's tripping. But he's not Michael Jordan, and right now he's not LeBron James. Ah, yeah. that's what you lost, bro. Talk. All right, Go time on. now for Darnell's question of the day. Darnell, take it over. It's Darnell. That's my guy. My guy. My question of the day. My guy. My guy. My question, question, question of the day. I saw that right knee. I saw that right knee. Yeah. <laughs> Buckley. <laughs> Daddy Lil Wayne in the sprinter. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, play All right, guys. So we're all former athletes here, and lucky for us, we've been able to find our next career path. But for a lot of young athletes and a lot of my friends and former teammates, there's it, a tough transition figuring out what's next for them. So what advice would you give young athletes during this tough transition from sports to the real world? Mm. My thing is, what I got into sports writing, not for the financial gain, not ever thinking about, I literally thought at age 50, I would make $70,000 a year and I'd be happy as heck. Mm. Follow what you love. I wanted to stay connected to sports. That's why I went into sports writing. Mm. Love to read the newspaper. If you follow something, if you get into a, a career that you love, it'll never feel like work and you'll do it to the best of your ability. Love that, love that. Um, mentally, in terms of identity, never internalize and swallow that you're a football player. Play football, man. Like, I, I, I see too many cats who, in terms of trying to be committed to something, they are fully involved and not thinking about anything else outside of that in terms of your academic pursuits, in terms of your other interests. Like, it's a means to an end, so too many guys think that they are the ball. But when the ball stops bouncing, who are you? And that's a sad drop for a lot of guys who don't realize that before that moment. For college athletes, it's, it's always saying, you use football, don't let football use you. Mm -hmm. And so go get your degree and, and try to get a good job. If you're, you're a professional athlete, I would say once you get to about 60 to 70% into your career, past the halfway point, Start trying to plan on something that you like, like Jason said, so that as soon as you're done, mm. you can try to transition right into it because we've been living our whole lives on itinerary. Yeah. Be here at this time, be here at that time. And so when you, you don't have anything to do, you wake up whenever you want, transition is, is immediate, as fast as you can immediately. Yeah. But it kind of touch on what your point about the college athletes. It's hard for you. You've been putting all this work and time and effort into this one game. Literally, every, like for me, when I played the game, you know, my grade school, the school part was easy. Like, I, I was going to get my grades. That wasn't nothing. So my focus was football. So my career ended with a knee injury. And once I got hurt, it was like, all right, like, move on, find out, like, figure out life. And for a young a young man, That's it's very rare, difficult though, to figure out that next, that next step. Everybody at every school in America, and you know this, think they're playing in the NFL yeah. or they think they're making it to the NBA. Mm. And so you have to be realistic and say, let me get this degree because the chances of me making it are slim, right. and slim. we don't think like that because we all think we're making it. One last thing that I tell young people, and Darnell, you've seen me talk to the Ball State football team, and I say it all the time. If somehow you can avoid taking on lifelong responsibilities at 21, 22, 23, mm -hmm. you will be a success. Mm -hmm. Opportunities will come knocking at your door. And what I mean by that is, try not to have a baby before age 25. Yeah. Wear a condom. Right. Mm -hmm. Avoid all of that you got a great chance of being successful. Coming up, Seahawks Pro Bowl receiver Tyler Lockett joins us live from Atlanta as we look ahead to the Super